So, give me a common time beat. It doesn't matter how fast or slow it is. What I want to hear are evenly spaced beats and the correct stresses on the beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Strong, weak, medium, weak. Now we have four beats, a strong beat, a weak beat, a medium beat, and a weak beat again. And then we go back to our strong beat. So from the time we hear the first measure, we expect to continue hearing this pattern throughout the music. And this expectation sets the framework for interesting violations of those expectations. One song might not violate that expectation at all, whilst another might do so often. So our beat patterns establish our most basic and steady expectations in music. The beat pattern can be any number of things, but the most common pattern, common time, is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Whatever speed we hear this pattern at, it is common time. So common time means four beats per measure. But not only that. Common time also sets the value of each beat at a quarter note, otherwise known as a crotchet. So no matter how long the beat lasts in real time, it will be what we call a quarter note. This note name, of course, comes from the portion of the meter the note is occupying in common time. If we have four beats per measure in common time, each beat occupies a quarter of the measure. A quarter note, also known as a crotchet, looks like a black dot or ball with a stick sticking out of it. The stick either pointing up or down, depending on what looks neater on the stave, the five lines we write music on. I think most people can conjure a mental image of this note, but of course you can search for a quarter note or crotchet online if you want to look at it. So if a quarter note is worth one beat in common time, how many beats do you think a half note is worth in common time? Two. Two. Double a quarter, of course. Half is double a quarter. Very good. A half note looks just like a quarter note, except that the circle isn't black now. It has no feeling. It's just like an O or a zero with a stick coming out of it. Again, the stick might be sprouting or rooting from the circle, depending on which part of the stave it's on. So if a quarter note takes a space of one beat in common time, and if a half note takes a space of two beats, how many beats does a whole note take? Four. Four. So the whole measure. So if we have a whole note in common time, it's the only note in the measure. It occupies all four beats. A whole note looks just like a circle with no feeling and no tails, just like an O or a zero. So common time is so common that we see that the very names of the notes relate to the portions of the measure they occupy in common time. Quarter note, half note, whole note. So common time has four beats per measure and each beat is worth a quarter note. In traditional waltz time, we have three beats per measure. Dum 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 dum. Take a moment to appreciate how different that feels to common time without any other musical context, just dum 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 compared to dum 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 dum. These two times feel so very different. There are various things responsible for that. Now we are dividing time into threes rather than fours. We also have a different pattern of beats. How many emphasized beats can you feel in waltz time? Dum 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 dum. There's one strong and two weak. Yes, just the one strong beat and then two weak beats. Can you think why that might be? Why don't we have a medium beat in waltz time? Because you can't half it because it's three. Very well done. We can't divide waltz time in half and land on a beat. So we have no secondary emphasized beat, no medium beat in waltz time, just one strong beat and two weak ones. Dum, 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 dum. Each beat is worth a quarter note in waltz time too, even though a quarter note is of course named for the portion of the measure it occupies in common time. In waltz time, a quarter note doesn't occupy a quarter of the measure, no. So what fraction of the measure does a quarter note occupy in waltz time if we have three beats per measure? A third. A third but it's still called a quarter note in all contexts. So we shouldn't let this confuse us. And we can, of course, also use the quarter note's other name, the crotchet. 
On sheet music, measures are divided up by vertical lines or bars in musical jargon. These bars help us understand each occurrence of dum 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 or dum 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 at a glance without the need to count notes. So whilst we can of course divide waltz time into equal parts, we cannot divide it into halves and land on any natural beat. Waltz time divides the measure into three equal parts. Dum 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 dum. But there is no point we can divide it in half to make a medium beat. So we have just one strong beat in waltz time. Common time, on the other hand, can be divided into four equal parts, so into quarters, and also into halves. So common time is so common because of the structural complexity and simplicity that it offers us all at once. We can always find both simpler and more complicated beat structures, but common time is a happy medium between complexity and simplicity. So we have learned how common time is four beats per measure, each beat being measured in terms of a quarter note or crotchet, the note that is a coloured black circle with a stick pointing out of it. How many beats per measure did traditional waltz time have? Three. Three. Each beat being worth a quarter note here too. But none of this information actually sets a speed for these times. It only establishes how time is divided up. So waltz time might be, for example, bum 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 bum. Or it might also be bum 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 bum. Both for waltz time. Musical speed we refer to as tempo, and it's information given to us either as a beats per minute value or a verbal description on the sheet music. This is marked towards the top of the sheet music with a precise number like 60 BPM, 60 beats per minute, or a description like moderate or slow. And especially in classical or baroque style music, these descriptions usually come in Italian. So you might see moderato for moderate. And this refers to a range of 108 to 120 beats per minute. Or you might see a word like allegro, which represents a range of 120 to 156 beats per minute. Allegro means happy, and faster tempos tend to sound happier, just like higher pitched notes sound happier than lower pitched ones. So you can check the term you find on the internet to get the beats per minute range for the term. Or, of course, you can just listen to recordings of the music you want to play to get the speed. And in time, you will develop a general feel for these words and BPM values so you can understand everything you need to know about time from an initial glance at the sheet music. The good thing about descriptions rather than a specific BPM value is, of course, they give you a range. So the musician has a small margin of choice in regards to the speed of the piece, which allows the instrument player to exercise their role as interpreter. Of course, because English has a strong Latin root to it, you can also often figure out what these Italian tempo terms mean in a general sense for yourself. For example, do you think largo, largo, is for slow or fast music? Uh, slow. Slow, largo, like large, long, is for slow music. And how about grave, grave? Also slow. Also slow, slower than largo, as you might imagine. So, at the glance of a piece of sheet music, we get two separate elements giving us all the basic information about time. A word or some words, often in Italian, describing the speed range. Or indeed, we get a BPM value, an exact numerical value for beats per minute. Or maybe both of these things together. And then we have what we call the time signature, which tells us whether we are in waltz time or common time or whatever. A time signature sits at the beginning of the musical stave within the lines and consists of two numbers, one over the other. The top number shows beats per measure. So what is the top number in the time signature of common time? How many beats per measure do we have in common time? Four. Four. And in waltz time, what is the top number of the time signature? Three. Three, good. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the top number of the time signature represents beats per measure, and the bottom number represents the type of note that each beat is worth. So we know in common time and in traditional waltz time, each beat is worth what type of note? Uh, a quarter note. Yes, a crotchet or a quarter note. 
So the quaternal or crotchet is also represented with a number four in time signatures. Four here, of course, relating to quota. And that's in all time signatures, even if the quaternal isn't actually taking up a quarter of the measure, as is the case in Watt's time. So common time is four over four. Four beats per measure, or in other words, a strong beat every four beats, each beat being measured in quarter notes. Of course, how long that quarter note lasts will depend on beats per minute, which is information we get somewhere at the top of the sheet music, either in numerical format representing the beats per minute or a probably Italian description. The time signature, as mentioned, is written within the stave at the beginning of the piece of music. So what numbers do we have at the beginning of the stave in a piece of waltz music? What is the time signature? Three and four. Three over four. Three beats per measure, each beat worth a quarter note. So the, the top number gives us the beats per measure, and then the bottom number is what gives us our type of note. So in both common time and in waltz time, each beat is worth a quarter note, which we represent with what number? With four. Four. So the time signature of Woods time is three over four. Three over four. Three beats per measure, each beat worth a quarter note, otherwise known as a crotchet. So the time signature, along with the beats per minute, sets the structure and speed of the piece of music, both how it divides time up into units and the speed at which it does so. So of course a quarter note, with its number four, is getting its name and numerical representation from the role it plays in common time, so common common time is. Whatever time we are in, a crotchet or a quarter note is represented by the number four in time signatures. So if a quarter note is represented by a four, what number might we use to represent an eighth note? An eighth. An eighth, of course. An eighth note, otherwise known as a quaver, looks just like the quarter note, only that it also has a little tail on its stick, on the black line the quarter note has sprouting from it. So if we have six beats a measure, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, and each beat is worth an eighth note, what would the time signature look like? Six over eight. Well done, six over eight, which also sounds kind of waltzy. Can you think why that might be? Uh, it's double three over four. Well done. Six over eight is double three over four, no? Six over eight. Can you describe what is happening in six over eight time for me? How many emphasized verse weak beats do you think we should have? You're going to have a... Uh... A strong one on the fourth. So a medium beat, actually. No, our strong beat is on number one. If we get another strong beat, it's going to make us count again from number one. So we'll have an, a medium beat where? There's strong, weak, weak, medium, weak, weak. Bravo. Excellent. So in 6-8 time, we can divide the measure in half. So we get a medium beat in the middle of 6 over 8 time, just like in common time. Where exactly does that medium beat fall? What number marks the beginning of the second half of six over eight time? Four. 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 Well done. If we have six beats per measure, the second half of the measure starts on the fourth beat. So just like in common time, we get a medium beat in the middle of the measure in six over eight time. We might even say that six over eight is like a fusion of common and warts time. We are grouping in threes, but we also have a division in the middle of the measure. Six over eight time carries elements from both warts and common time. So you will notice all different time signatures occurring in music, but what you will most notice is just how common common time is. In fact, it is so common that people decided writing four over four for the time signature might be far too much effort and common time is often represented by a stylized C, of course, standing for common. Countless musical genres take common time as their standard choice, and some musical genres commonly occur in different times. Take tango, for example, which commonly occurs in common time, in waltz time, becoming tango vals, or waltz tango, or in two over four time. What is happening in two over four time? What does the two mean? What does the top number tell us? The, the measure, the, the number of beats 
in the measure. Good. So in 2 over 4 time, we have 2 beats per measure. And what does the 4 tell us? Quarter notes. The fact that we are counting the beats in quarter notes. So how will that sound in dumbs or any sound you want to make or in numbers? How does 2 over 4 time sound? Dum, 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 dum. Good. Dum, 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 dum. One, two, one, two, one, two. And there we see the importance of why in common time we need to not put too much emphasis on the third beat because if we do, it will make us restart the count and we'll have two over four time. If instead of a quarter note marking each beat, we have a half note, how would the time signature look now? With a two at the bottom. Good, two over two. And this is also known as cut time. It's common time, cut in half, at least in a very literal way. Each number of the four over four time signature has been halved. So two over two time, cut time, is often represented with the same stylized C we use for common time, only now the C has a vertical line running through it, showing that it is cut. Music notation is often quite literal like this. So you may see those two stylizations instead of numbers for time signatures. A C for common time, 4 over 4, 4 beats a measure, each beat worth a quarter note. And the C with a vertical line running through it for cut time, 2 over 2, 2 beats per measure, each a half note. Only those two though. The rest of the time signatures are always represented with two numbers, one over the other. The number of beats goes on top. The beat value, whether each beat is worth a koche or a quaver or a half note or whatever, goes below. So at the beginning of a piece of sheet music, we get all of this information about time, both the BPM value and the time signature, letting us know how time is divided up and how quickly time appears to pass. Of course, the speed of music is about how quickly or slowly time appears to pass, because time is always passing at the same speed. We are simply creating an illusion of speed through our musical manipulation of time.